Hello everybody. So my name is Jeremy Devins, Acquired Mind Astrology, and I am about to record this week's horoscope for the month of June 2021. So I'm going to be here live on Instagram while I'm recording, and I'm not going to respond to messages while I'm recording. This is the same recording that will go out to everybody listening on the podcast. That If you subscribe there, this is what you hear. And I just wanted, thought it'd be cool to uh, record it here live, and we'll see how this goes. If this is something you want me to do more of, I'll do that. And then if you have questions, I will respond to those after I finish the recording. So plan about 10 to 15 minutes or so where I'll just be doing the podcast, and then I'll look at the screen and comment. And I'll be, you'll see my eyes looking around because I'm looking at my notes here. So I won't be looking at the camera all the time here on Instagram. But let's see how this goes, just trying things and seeing if it's helpful for you. And uh, if you enjoy it, I'll keep doing it. So anyway, here we go with the recording. My name is Jeremy Devins, and this is the Quiet Mind Astrology Podcast with the monthly horoscope for June 2021. And this month we have 10 significant transits that I'll go over, as well as five favorable activities, the most favorable activities to focus on this month, and five things to avoid in general. So I'll give you this quick, really quick overview of everything right now at the beginning. So the five most favorable activities this month are learning new things you're passionate about, maintenance, maintaining the things that you already have going and tending to those, so making sure that they're running well, and solidifying foundations. So if there's already something in place in your life, making sure that it's working at its best, any sort of reflective activities, reviewing, revising, revisiting, meditation, things like this. And then the most positive dates this month are from June 16th till June 27th. And I'll explain why as we get into the podcast. So those are the most favorable things for this month. Now the five things to avoid are, number one, starting completely new things. So we've got a lot of retrograde energy this month. And being impulsive about any big decisions, the Rajas Guna is high this month. Any sort of dogmatic thinking or acting. There's a lot of risk of violence and aggression in this month based on previous transits I've looked at. And then any sort of major commitments. And there's a lot of uh, transits that are not so favorable for any sort of major commitments like weddings or ceremonies if that is able to be avoided this month, if you plan on spontaneously getting married this month, maybe hold that off for a better time. So those are the five major things to avoid this month. Now, we'll go into more detail. So as always, you can get your free birth chart at quietmindastrology.com and understand how this is affecting you personally. And you wanna look at where these signs are in your chart to understand where these planets are transiting through your chart. For example, if you have cancer in your 12th house, that would make you a Leo rising, then this Mars transit will affect your 12th house. If you have cancer in your 10th house, this Mars transit I'm about to talk about will affect your career. And if it's in your 7th house, it'll affect your relationships and so on. You can always go back to the episodes on the houses that I recorded a while back or the Vedic Astrology 101 course if you want to understand exactly what that means. But otherwise, I'll give you the general interpretations for everybody right now. So on June 2nd, Mars moves into Cancer where it is considered debilitated, especially next month where it's really on its point of degree of debilitation. But it's still weakened all throughout this month. Mars, the planet of initiation, action, ambition, and drive, is turning its focus more towards things that provide nourishment. So what nourishes you? Again, reviewing your foundations, your sort of basic needs, maintaining what has been working for you. It's the time to go back over those things and your diet, exercise, uh, workout regimen, these sort of things, yoga practice, these sort of things where Mars is in its very protective nakshatra of Pusha, which has a sort of Mars energy to it of being protective. So you might feel a little bit 
sensitive, overly sensitive. You might feel a little bit uh, too focused on yourself and selfish and a little bit too dogmatic or fundamentalist in your beliefs this month. So that's why you want to avoid any sort of fighting over your beliefs. Some debate is good and hashing things out is always good to work through and navigate our challenges. But looking through this transit historically, this is a time where there has been major violence and protest and and harmful activities happening throughout history because people can get so polarized and that's already happening so much in society right now. So we wanna be mindful of that. Where the Mars and Cancer energy at its best is cooking, gardening, taking care of the home, sort of protecting the home, learning self-defense, these sort of things. And there is a focus on achievement and striving towards things, but these are things that are in alignment with your dharma, your bigger life purpose, not your egoic purpose or your egoic needs or I am this, you are that, we are different and we must fight about it. That is sort of Mars and Pusha at its worst and that can lead to all sorts of harmful responses. So if you catch yourself caught up in that sort of drama, notice it and choose how you want to respond instead. The deity associated with Pusha Nakshatra is Brihaspati, which is a form of Jupiter. And Jupiter is wise and brings wisdom and knowledge. So all throughout this month is a great month for education and learning new skills and being more selfless and less selfish and more humanitarian and focusing on what's good for society rather than just for me. Our work is always a place to do that. Our dharma is our place to do that, to be of service to others. Life's most pressing and urgent question, as MLK said, is what are you doing to help others? That's what this nakshatra is pushing us towards. Second big transit is Mercury retrograde in Taurus, or as the kids are saying now, Mercury's in Gatorade. That's I keep seeing that meme. Uh, so Mercury's in Gatorade, you can blame all your problems on this. And it's in Mrigashira Nakshatra until June 22nd. And that brings a sort of aimless wandering energy where we're not quite sure of what to choose. It's sort of a window shopping energy, which isn't necessarily bad. Because there's times where we need to weigh the pros and cons and before we make a decision. But this sort of thrill of the hunt is going to be more interesting than the actual catching of the kill metaphorically here. Sorry for that. That's not the most kind uh, sattvic metaphor, but that, that is the nature of this. Mergashira is the deer and uh, Mercury here going retrograde, going back over this energy. It's the longest retrograde period of this year. So it's going to feel a little drawn out over this next three weeks. And Retro retrogrades are not a bad thing. I personally love them. I've got a bit of retrograde energy in my birth chart, so I do feel at home with it, and you may as well if you have retrogrades in your birth chart. Uh, but th there's a lot of retrograde energy this month, so it's not a good time for signing new contracts, creating new agreements, and starting completely new things. But it is a good time for expressing yourself in communication to have discernment in the choices that you make and enjoy the sort of comparing and shopping and reviewing different options, different creative pursuits and exploring different things, even healthy debates. Again, talking to people who have different opinions than you and finding a bit of playfulness and curiosity and understanding and that can be really healing and helpful as long as you don't become dogmatic or fundamentalist in your beliefs, which is unfortunately the way of the world right now is so much of that happening uh, for so many other astrological reasons but also personal reasons right if we're not at the whims of the weather we're not at the whims of these moving of celestial bodies we choose how to engage with it and how to respond to it so there is a spiritual initiation that is possible with this transit especially because we're in this eclipse season right now big times of transformation and growth I personally felt the shift significantly. Of course, I'm always paying attention to this stuff, so there is a confirmation bias there. But you may have felt that as well in yourself of the shift throughout the lunar eclipse that we just had, and then the two-week period before the solar eclipse coming up on the 10th. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but there can be an impulsive, fickle, scattered nature to our energy right now at the beginning of the month. Again, Rajas Guna. Rajas is activity and movement and change. And it is the distillation of Vata Dosha, if you're familiar with the doshas. So <clears throat> you can feel a bit scattered and fickle and impulsive. And any sort of decision coming from that place 
pause, take a moment, take a breath, reflect on it, have some more time in introspection, reflection, review, revising old projects. For example, I've had several things around the house that have just been like waiting to be finished, like this little home repair project, this stack of papers, this pile that I just kind of let build up. And as I've talked about before, I work with that energy because we know retrogrades are going to happen all the time. We have Saturn retrograde every year, Jupiter every year, Mercury three to four times every year, Mars every two years, right? So retrogrades happen all the time and we can plan for it and work with it. And uh, that's where I can uh, kind of let things build up and let, okay, I'm not going to try to manage everything and like clean up every drawer and every desk and every project all the time because then we're not moving forward, right? We've got to sort of uh, create a workspace and then create our work and then we create some mess and the universe and nature always creates excess, right? It's something I think about a lot because like if you look at like any sort of plant or fruit in nature, it always produces way more seeds than it ever produces new trees, right? In most cases, right? <laughs> like uh, we're getting to the summer here in the Northern Hemisphere, watermelon, right? Always the watermelon seeds, but how many of those seeds actually become new watermelons, right? Very few. So anytime we're in a creative project or doing work, we're going to create lots and lots of seeds. And this is the time of retrograde where we clean those things up and which ones do we actually want to nourish and keep growing and maintain. Those are some of the key words this month, nourishment and maintenance. Which seeds do we want to keep nourishing and maintaining to grow? And which ones is the time to discard, to throw away, to donate, to let go, to sell, right? We can't keep everything. We can't turn every watermelon seed into a new watermelon. We only keep a couple of those. Don't know why I'm thinking of that. It's starting to get a little thirsty at the moment. So I <laughs> uh, keep moving on here to uh, the next transit is the solar eclipse on June 10th. That is in Rigashira as well. So everything I just said amplified even more so. The sun puts a big spotlight on that area. And it adds a creativity to how we approach these things. And again, just think of a deer. Think of a deer in nature and how they can be kind of scattered and flighty and skittish. And that energy can happen for us right now at this beginning of the month. Uh, but they can be very loyal to their family and their little packs that they run in. And they can be very caring and sensitive and nurturing. And we can be those things as well. And the sun being here with the solar eclipse, the sun is blocked out in Taurus and Mergashira. So this, where we might have some issues of uh, being arrogant about these areas of our lives, of finances, of relationships, of our assets, and uh, our just quest for knowledge is kind of, again, the big focus this month of learning new things. So we wanna notice if that's ego driven. That's the sun here. The sun, the ego is being blocked out and we're not necessarily seeing clearly around the eclipses. And of course, if you look back through history, uh, if the astrologer to the king did not tell them about the upcoming eclipse, off with their heads, right? So the astrologer would be uh, executed if they did not tell their kings about the eclipses because they were considered such inauspicious events that you wanted to know when they were coming around and not make any major decisions at that time. Now, I think that's a bit dramatic and uh, I'm telling you about the eclipse now, so uh, so I, I think I'm good, right? So if any kings are listening, and this is a time where we want to be a little cautious about our decisions. So I've tested this over the years myself, of course, and yes, you can make big decisions. Yes, you can start completely new things and take bold, make bold decisions. And you can expect a lot of difficulties and challenges around that, and it may not last a very long time. Now, always we have free will and choice and meditation and yoga and service, seva, that we can come back to. And we want to live in alignment with our unique purpose and dharma, which we really, really learn through meditation, more so than even astrology. Astrology just reflects and validates these things. Uh, we can't look outside of ourselves for these answers ever. We've got to look within. But the solar eclipse is sort of shrouding your light. It's shrouding your ability to see clearly necessarily over this two weeks before and after 
June 10th. So with all that and the retrograde energy, the Gatorade energy, if you will, uh, be careful and cautious about any big decisions you make and think twice about them. Maybe get some reflection in meditation and some counsel from somebody you trust. Just if you can avoid making big decisions, great. If you have to make big decisions, totally okay. It's not the end of the world. Don't worry about it. Your intention and what you put your attention on is way more important than uh, any sort of fear mongering or worrying about things, right? So our attention is so much more important than that. So if you feel like I've got to make this decision, it is that I've already scheduled the wedding or the ceremony during this time. And the astrologer is now saying it's a bad thing. Don't worry about it, right? It's your attitude that really uh, trumps everything. Your intuition trumps astrology every time, as one of my mentors would say. So just trust that. And if you're going to be going through any sort of big commitment or choices this month, uh, just do your meditation practices, do some sort of seva or service, and just choose not to feed those negative thoughts. And if you're not clear, then wait. When you are clear, that's the time to act. When you're not clear, is not the time to act. Number four big transit this month, Sun in Gemini. It stays there for a month, of course. That's on June 15th. Sun moves every 30 days, we know this. And it's also in Mergashir, as mentioned, until June 21st. It's all the above, the, all the things I just mentioned, again, continues uh, all throughout the month, especially through June 21st and 22nd. Great time for developing your intelligence and learning new skills. Education, education this month, education. That's a good use of this energy. Learning new things, reviewing old things. And learning about old things, even. <laughs> and reviewing new things, right? So a little bit of both. And then number five is on the 20th, Jupiter turns retrograde until October 18th in Aquarius. So there's another one, right? The big one that happens every year for about six months or so, but it'll be from June to October in Aquarius. This is in Shatavisha Nakshatra until July 20th. This is about our dharma as well and what is your life purpose why are you here how can you serve and how are you serving others revisit discarded abandoned and forgotten projects tasks and relationships revisit discarded abandoned and forgotten projects tasks and relationships so anything that's been left to the side forgotten about things you let pile up Again, like I say, personally, I let things pile up till the retrogrades come. And I know they're coming because I do the annual review. I do that in the Mindful New Year course, which is a long ways away. It's not until the end of this year is the next one. But I do show you the whole year ahead so you can plan for these things. And it is good to just know when they're coming up. And I'll always talk about them here on the podcast. Uh, but this is the time now, Jupiter retrograde till, till October. And this happens every year. Last time was in May to September last year, 2020. And what happened in that time? Unfortunately, the tragic death of George Floyd and all of the protests and such around that. So that was last time when Jupiter's retrograde. And it went back through these reviewing old things that we had maybe thought we were moving on from in society with all of the issues with police reform and Black Lives Matter and all these terrible things happening uh, with loss of life. And that was where we went back over that and we said, as a society in the US, like we need to pay attention to this again and go back over this. And that may happen again here in the US, maybe in a different light and a different level. And uh, I'll get to that more at the end of this episode because there's some interesting things happening there. But on a personal level, this is a time of finding bargains. And this is not going to happen because this is it until 12 years from now. So this is the last time Jupiter goes back over this area of the sky where we may find bargains and deals in these areas of our lives and the structures of society. And as I've talked about many times, we're moving away from the U.S. dollar being the primary currency of the world and uh, towards a crypto decentralized sort of currency, a Fed coin or something like this uh, around 2030. That is in the horizon. And we saw last year when this happened is sort of the last uh, opportunity to get into the stock market before it went crazy on this bull run because of Rahu and Taurus. And again, I'm not a financial advisor, but that bull run is continuing through Rahu and Taurus all through this year to a degree. 
course, it's been sideways and all up and down because of the Mars and uh, Gemini energy and Mars and Cancer will not help that. So if you are in investments and you are a long term investor, just hang tight. This is a rough patch. Again, not a financial advisor, just telling you what I look at for myself and the choices I'm making are based on this. So if you want to know what I'm thinking, that's just what it is, just my opinion. Uh, but as Mar when Mars goes to Leo uh, in a little bit here, just checking the exact date on that, July 20th, uh, there's some interesting things happening with Ethereum at that point if you're following all this. But uh, Mars, uh, July 20th, Mars goes into Leo, much, much, much more positive for finances and all these volatility of stocks and everything. I could be completely wrong, so do not take my advice, just sharing my opinion if you're curious. Uh, but uh, that is interesting stuff. It's very interesting stuff going on there. And uh, Jupiter being retrograde essentially is saying it's an opportunity. If you are somebody who has the means and resources right now to buy stocks when they're low, you know, buy low, sell high is the idea. Uh, that's to be expected throughout this transit, especially here when it kicks off on June 20th, Jupiter going retrograde. Uh, that is a time of finding bargains and deals and opportunities. And it's very unfortunate that it's on this scale of society where People have lost their businesses, people have lost their lives. It's been a lot of tragedy and loss because of this pandemic and the government response to it. So that is happening through June 20th through October 18th where things go back over our beliefs, our ideals, our, our what we follow and what sources we're following for information and to review those things. It's a time of dissolution back to maintenance. So what is the time to let go of here in the retrograde period? And so we can focus on what we want to maintain and sustain. Review your diet and health, easy for me to say. Review your diet, health, exercise, and nutrition around this time as well. And if you want to get back into a workout program, improve your diet, improve your exercise, get back into yoga, Check out the quietmind.yoga website. You can get a seven day free trial of the Quiet Mind Yoga membership there. If you want to follow along with yoga practices, of course, I teach classes, uh, there's eight classes a week there on the membership. So, yoga, astrology, Ayurveda, always sister sciences. When you do one, it's really, really helpful to do all of them. Moving along here. Oh, one more interesting thing here. February 19th, 2022. That's the day that Pluto moves into the third pada of Uttara Shada into basically Pluto I've been talking about all year, revolution. Big time changes in society. And now Pluto moves into a section of the sky related to collaboration. And this is connected to with this Jupiter transit because we're talking about political beliefs and ideals and values and religion and philosophy that everybody follows. Even if you're apolitical or whatever side you're on, I really don't care personally <laughs> uh, what you believe uh, or what side you're on. I think we're all uh, titled to our own opinions. But uh, February 19th, we'll see a big moving forward of uh, change in society. Again, I've talked about many times, this can be a positive revolution. This doesn't need to be violent or harmful or dangerous or hurting anybody. But there will be big changes in what the U.S. is as a world leader and power and uh, to what democracy is and all these these big changes happening. And I see more people coming together and collaborating and society as a whole coming together in February. And as I've said, around April, when all of this pandemic stuff really starts to move on and we move into a new phase of the world where people are more united Hopefully. Is it possible? Yes. Is it uh, going to happen? We shall see. We can all do our little part to contribute, especially because on the number six transit on June 20th, the summer solstice, this is the time of balance, harmony, and reflection. The day and night are equal length. It's hard to believe already we are getting to the peak of the longer days. Wow. It's uh, the middle of June, June 20th. Of course, the summer solstice is a day early this year. That's when the sun is, did I say this wrong? I'm doing this live, so I can't edit it. But uh, the sun is uh, the biggest, the longest time of the day is the sun, is the sun, right? 
Easy for me to say. And the night is at its shortest time. All right, there we go. So summer solstice, the day, it's the longest day of the year, the shortest night of the year. And uh, I think I said that backwards before. So Rajas Guna is dominant. And there goes my thinking as well with the Rajas Guna. Not as clear and sharp as sattvic thinking. So Rajas Guna is a lot of activity, a lot of movement and change, but finding balance, harmony, reflection, and integrating your yin and yang sides within you because we all have them the solar and lunar sides. So the summer solstice here in the Northern Hemisphere is the longest day of the year. It's a time for celebration and being with people if possible and making the most of maybe getting out of this whole difficulty of the pandemic. I know it's not over in Canada and India and other parts of the world. There's still a lot of restrictions and challenges in the UK as well. So hopefully finding some sort of relief and moving forward as a society in our health in our relationships with others from the summer solstice that is a big turning point in the year as well on top of all of the uh, eclipse energy at the beginning of the month those of you in the southern hemisphere of course that's inverted longest night of the year so it's a time for more yin activities more reflection more internal time Hello, Kimberly in Australia in the mentorship and everybody else listening in Australia and Sandra and others. Uh, it's always grateful to hear from you. Number seven, June 22nd is Mercury going direct in Taurus. A lot of transits this month, so we're going to keep going a little quicker now. So Mercury goes direct in Taurus. It's in Rohini there from the 16th to 27th. This is the most positive, favorable time of the whole month. So any sort of important things you can plan around then, please do then. I will have a Ayurveda workshop happening in this time. More to come on that announcement. So June 16th to 27th, a time for comfort, luxury, enjoying nice things. Rahu and Mercury are here in Taurus. Lots of energy there. Very good time financially as well. So uh, if you can find those opportunities, as I mentioned, around June 20th, Again, not a financial advisor, just kind of telling you what I'm thinking here. Uh, but good, good opportunities there in that time. But yeah, everything I said about Mercury earlier replies here from June 28th, moving forward, and Mercury's back there. So Mercury's in Taurus basically most of the month, and it's going to go into that uh, very favorable time, 16th to 27th. Within that, number eight transit this month is on June 22nd. Venus is in Gemini in Ardra Nakshatra from June 3rd to June 13th. I'm going to go into all this on the weekly horoscopes because there's too much to cover here. There's three big transits of Venus. But essentially, this first two weeks, lay low, keep the peace in relationships. There is likely to be some sort of stormy weather or... Uh, significant issues coming up here in relationships from June 3rd to June 13th. Necessary issues, things that need to be addressed. Uh, but Ardra uh, is represented by a teardrop and it's sort of the darkness before the dawn. And there will be some difficulties in relationship here the first two weeks and some levity and lightness after that. So things lighten up and it's much more positive from June 14th to 23rd, a fresh start excuse me and this is a great time for beginnings and foundations and creation and again taking care of those foundations but overall this month not the best time for new beginnings in general but if you do need to start something that period between june 14th to 23rd as far as the 27th is the best time nourishment and maintenance as i've said over and over again those are the themes of the month Number nine is on June 24th, the full moon in Sagittarius in Mula Nakshatra, getting to the root of issues. This is a Kama Nakshatra, so the four aims of life. This is Kama, about desire. There's not too much of that desire energy this month going on, more of the Dharma energy, more about life purpose. But now, June 24th, we get through that summer solstice. We're into the retrogrades, almost out of the Gatorade, so to speak. And uh, I kind of don't like saying it because I don't uh, really like supporting sugar water. But uh, I'll, I'll just do it for today. It's one, one day only. Uh, so again, June 24th, full moon in Sagittarius. Full moon's conclusions, reflections, review, celebration. Again, with the solstice as well on top of that. 
this is the time for those kinds of things and getting to the root of any desires, any issues. And what do you really want? Kama, again, it's a comma, aim of life, a desire. What do you really want? If you can do any sort of gardening, that's a great way to do that, getting to the literal roots of your plants in nature, even better. Uh, and your beliefs in Sagittarius, what do you stand for? What do you really believe? And likely some uprooting of beliefs. If you are open to having some of those difficult conversations earlier in the month, uh, so we're kind of have some new realizations about ourselves. When we clear away what is unnecessary and excessive, we can get to the root of issues of what we really want to create. Number 10, finally, a pretty big one. Uh, June 25th, Neptune turns retrograde until November 30th. It's in Aquarius there, and it's in Purvabhadrapada. This nakshatra uh, represents uncovering of disillusionment, of scandals, of working through revealing of secrets and interesting thing. As I said earlier, this beginning of the year, do you remember what big thing is happening here? We have on June 25th, there was the deadline for 120 days for NASA to reveal all of their secrets about aliens. Right? That was somehow wedged into this trillion, uh, I think $2 trillion uh, coronavirus relief bill. It said 120 days for NASA to come clean all their secrets about aliens. And we've seen that more if you've been paying attention at all to any of the recent up, uh, stories coming out about, uh, oh yeah, here's another video of uh, uh, some UFO we didn't know what it was from the government. And on mainstream news, they're just saying, okay, here we go. Here's, here's some alien stuff for you, uh, by the way, in the middle of a pandemic. And, of course, I've never been super gung-ho about aliens or looked into it too much myself, so I can just plead ignorance about that. I don't know too much. Uh, it's an interesting topic. And I've always felt kind of like, well, if there are aliens, now what? Right? And so uh, I think, can we try to contact them? Can we try to learn from them? Yeah, can they teach us things? It is interesting, and this is just sort of a speculative, put on your tinfoil hat kind of moment. But the Roswell crash, crash happened in the 1950s, and just look at our technology in the world since 1950. It's unbelievable. It's ridiculous the amount of technological advancements we've had in that 70 years compared to any other 70 year period. And if that has anything to do with collecting alien technology from a spacecraft, uh, okay. Well, then it's been helpful, and that would be fascinating to know and uh, helpful to be out in the open about it. So I think the issue is that the government has lied about it, as they often do about things, and they say for the public security and public safety, uh, and then later come out and said, no, well, actually, there were alien spacecrafts, and actually, here are some UFOs. Take a look at this. All right? So we might get more of that, and from what I've seen, uh, they said that uh, there will be a classified portion of it, so they're only going to reveal so much. But this is an interesting time, and this is an Aquarius about progressive ideals and beliefs and illusions coming to light because of Neptune. Neptune represents illusions. So this is a time of uh, disillusionment may become an issue for some of us, uh, having to let go of old systems of belief and old illusions that we had. Scandals coming to the forefront, and there are many things like that happening politically, which I'm not going to go into. You can look that up yourself uh, if you can find it. DuckDuckGo is usually a less censored version of the Internet uh, in the U.S. So you can look up uh, any sort of scandals coming to the forefront. And, of course, we all have our own political opinions. So uh, look for maybe things that invalidate and look for a, a steel manning. It's finding people that have the exact opposite belief of you. And can you find some truth in what they're saying? I always think that's an interesting way to better understand each other and ourselves. Uh, interesting thing about this transit, Neptune went here in Aquarius a long time ago, way back in 2008 and 2009 is when it went into this uh, nakshatras of Aquarius and then into Aquarius. And that was the time that the phrase woke became part of uh, popular culture. And if you look at the Wikipedia page for that, it's credited through the Erica Badu song, uh, New America, 
uh, from her album New America, which is interesting because we're going into uh, New America very much so since then of 2008 and especially going forward here. Uh, but Neptune gets out of that sign of Aquarius. So Neptune went into Aquarius. All of this stuff about woke thinking came into the public culture and popular culture around that time uh, when Neptune went into Aquarius. And now we're ending that transit. And it's not fully done until 2023 or so. But we're almost to the end of it. It's a very slow one, about 14 years, how long Neptune takes to transit. And it represents cultural changes. You know, Neptune's a very slow-moving planet. And uh, there will be a sort of gratification, some sort of coming to fruition of things coming to light, of lessons that we need to learn as a society in October 22nd to November 30th. Those are the significant dates to watch out for. October 22nd to November 30th this year. It's kicking off this month on the 25th, but we're really going to see it at that time, late October to November, where things come to light. And this woke movement comes to its sort of conclusion of like, what lessons are have we learned from it? How has it changed or shaped society? What has what have people woken up to? What have they been asleep to? What have they gone back to sleep to? What are they unwilling to wake up to? All, right, all these sort of things will come to fruition in October to November. So there we go. There's a pretty significant prediction. We'll come back to that and see what transpires there. Uh, if anything, I think the the woke movement has turned from what I thought, you know, when I was first hearing it in the early 2010s. It's like, yeah, I get behind that. We all should be awake and mindful and intentional. Uh, but if you look at who is funding, supporting that movement and their agendas, there's some interesting things happening there where it's not necessarily all about actually what's for the best of society and individuals as much as what's for the best of the people who are creating divisiveness and using that to control the narrative and opinions and feelings of others to create more division and separation and disconnection in the world. And I do not condone that. So I want to uh, uh, say that I think around this time that will come to the light where it's like, you know what, this is this is not necessarily a phrase I want to identify with for a lot of people. Like It's actually created more uh, disconnection, more uh, conflict. And we will see that this month that if people get riled up and fundamentalist about their beliefs, they will create more conflict and more difficulties will transpire. So a little longer prediction this month because there's a lot of stuff happening. This is a huge turning point in the month as the time of June often is. So I hope you found this helpful and interesting. And if you have any uh, questions about your chart, I want to understand how this affects you personally and what's going on in your life. Check out quietmindastrology.com where you can get your free birth chart. You can get the Vedic Astrology 101 course to learn about what I am talking about here and get a reading where I can tell you what's coming up on your horizon based on your dashas. Very interesting. You've got your own life cycles and karma you're playing out that is completely unique to you. So we go through that in the reading and then where all the planets are and your houses and signs and how all this stuff can be affecting you personally it's very much personalized at the at the reading. So quietmindastrology.com is where you can get that. It's live on Zoom. You get a recording as well. And then you can also join the Vedic Astrology membership. We do a live weekly class where we dissect and go into understanding different aspects of astrology right now. This week we'll be going through the moon, through the signs. And you can get a nice discount if you sign up for a yearly membership. The price will go up soon. So check it out now and it will never go back down. That's just the way I do it. So uh, we got we want to thank you and support the people who support this early on. Because I know I'm early on in this whole run. And this is something I'll be doing for many, many, many years to come. And I want to thank those of you who are here at the beginning to support this work. I think it's so important and so necessary. And we can literally heal each other and heal the planet heal each other of physical ailments mental ailments uh, any sort of disconnection and discord that we see in society from people who want to create division and we can create connection we can create a better understanding and curiosity and see you know what 
some people just think differently and that doesn't mean that they're bad or wrong or worse. We all have different gifts. We all have different skills to offer each other. And these transits bring to light different aspects of ourselves and each other that are here to be healed and addressed. And if one person has moon in Aries and another has moon in Libra, they can teach each other something. Right? We don't want all to be car carbon copy and we all think left or right or up or down or black or white. We all see things through a multitude of different dimensions and different perspectives. And astrology validates that and it gives us tools to better understand that these are my unique gifts and these are my unique lessons to learn in life that can help me grow and improve and be a better service to others. So the vision of what astrology can give us is immense and incredibly powerful and it's so much more than just oh well, you're a sun in gemini so you're going to be flirty right it's no 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 you're 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 a dim, you're a multi-dimensional and deep person who has never existed before and will never exist again and we're all here on this plane of existence to share a human experience and learn and grow together so we can do that by better understanding ourselves and each other through Vedic Astrology, which I think is pretty effing awesome. And if you do too, you can check out quietmindastrology.com and work with me more there. I will have another mentoring group coming up, a six-month program where we go deep into all of this stuff with live lessons. So that will be coming up. There's nothing on the site yet, but there will be soon. If you're interested, join any of my uh, newsletter links or any of my uh, updates there and you can check out the link in the uh, notes on the podcast so you can subscribe there and I will send out information about that soon or just keep listening to the podcast and you'll hear about it there. Quiet Mind Astrology on Instagram is where you can follow me and I hope you have a great month. I look forward to sharing more with you inside of the Vedic Astrology membership where I'll be doing sign by sign horoscopes right after this for the members. So if you want to know where this stuff is affecting you personally, the big, most important areas of your life to focus on this month, personally, that will be in the membership coming up shortly. Thank you for listening. Hope you have a great rest of your month and talk to you next time on the Quiet Mind Astrology Podcast. All right. Thank you all for... <laughs> joining me here on Instagram. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. And uh, nobody joined us live this time, but it's just the first time. So if you want me to do this again, let me know in the comments. And uh, if not, I'll find other creative things to do. So hope you have a great month and look forward to talking soon. Bye for now.